All right, welcome back everyone. Uh, today I'm gonna to be doing the video on the glow plug upgrade for the Cub Cadet uh, diesel tractors. Uh, this upgrade that I'm performing today is gonna to be on a 1772, but this will work on a 1572, 782D, et cetera. So uh, all the Cub Cadet diesels, this will all work, the same procedure I'm doing. Uh, I didn't come up with all this on my own. I did a lot of research. I have been here in the last year or so on this. And I did want to give credit to a, a gentleman named Todd Markle. Uh, he has a lot of good information on the internet um, about these Cub Cadets and doing upgrades. So I took a lot of advice um, from forums of his as well. And I was going to go ahead and just make a video of it uh, for you guys. It's a real easy process to do, to go through it. So anyone wanting to do this upgrade to their Cub Cadet, I'm going to put in uh, part numbers and show you length of wire, gauge of wire, and a step-by-step -step on how to do it uh, to sort of help you out in this video. So I've had the battery tender on this, so the battery's fully charged on this tractor. And the ambient temperature right here in the garage right now is 50 degrees when I look at the thermometer. So I'm gonna do a, a start on it now with stock, how it would have came new. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the upgrade. I'm gonna bring it back here put it back in the building overnight and about 24 hours from now uh, or later I'm gonna have the battery completely charged and we're gonna do another start on this with the glow plug upgrade to see how well it does. Now this tractor is equipped with a gear reduction starter so that's gonna aid the help of this as well but it'll still give you an idea with the gear reduction starter and the glow plug upgrade how much of a difference it makes. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. I hit the glow plugs, attempted to start this thing, but I've been dealing with this starter. Uh, some reason the solenoid or something's going bad on it. I'm either gonna have to put a relay on for that, or I'm gonna have to put a whole new starter in this thing because it's been driving me nuts. But anyway, that's a whole separate video. I'm doing one on the starter, and I'm probably gonna replace this one. So I have to lightly tap it when I go to start this with a hammer for this procedure. So uh, I apologize for that. Actually, it started better than I thought it was going to. It usually takes a little longer with the glow plugs and a few more tries, but um, even 50 degrees though, that's most diesels will start a little better than that. So we'll go ahead and take it up. We'll, we'll put the relay on, change out the glow plugs, wire it up, and then we'll see how much of a difference this actually makes. All right, so I got the tractor up here in the garage. I did remove the side panels, and that's because I wanted to mess around with that starter. You either got a bad ground or a wire connection or something's going out that starter. I have to keep tapping it to get this to work, but uh, I'm either gonna put a whole new starter in it or do something, but I wanted to look at that. Anyways, for the glow plug uh, relay upgrade, uh, what I plan on doing is I'm gonna run from the positive a cable I'm gonna make from the positive terminal. It's gonna go down behind the battery. I'm gonna drill a hole through this little firewall here and I'm probably gonna route the wire right up around here, the radiator hose, and come down here to the solenoid. Uh, two different ways you can do this, I've seen online. Some people mounted the solenoids underneath here, up oh, where the fuel pump is. I don't like doing it that way, and for the reason is, I guess you could come off the battery and come down here with your cable, but then to route the cable all the way up through here, um, it just seems like everything's gonna be in the way, so. Re another reason why I'm doing it this way is I can run my cable here and I can mount the solenoid right here. Uh, by doing this, 
I can take the wire that goes from the glow plugs now, which we'll get to that later and I'll show you, and I'm gonna mount that to my solenoid and I don't have to run any other wires. That's what'll kick the solenoid in to power the cable from the battery to the glow plugs directly. Now, uh, another advantage of doing it like this is I found a solenoid. We'll talk more about this in a little bit. This is probably a little heavier than what you need, but it's like $25. Uh, if you look at the, how this sits, the two bolts right here that hold the fan bracket on, uh, this solenoid mounts up perfect and it fits right on there. Let me go around the other side and get a better view here. I already did this on the other Kubota over there. More to come on that, but I've been working on that. Got it all painted and everything. There's, when I get that together here, I'll throw a video on. But anyways, uh, the only thing is that the, the holes here on this solenoid uh, need to be ground out a little larger. You can file them, grind them out, and you just take them bolts out. We'll clean them up real good because this is your ground and then existing bolts will bolt right there. So positive cable is gonna come off the battery down here. It's gonna to attach to this lug because that's the directions the battery has to attach to this one. And then the wire off of this lug will go into the glow plug. And then the wire, the existing wire on here will hook to the relay. So pretty simple. Uh, there's not much to this. We're gonna go through this here. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come off spin back around. I'm going to come off with a wire on this glow plug and run it down under here and that's going to hook in to the light on my dash. And the only thing that's going to do is when I turn that key for the glow plugs, if I'm getting power all the way through here to the rear glow plug, it's going to indicate it on this dash. So that's just letting me know that there's power going to the glow plugs. That's all it is. Uh, now some of you may be wondering, but mine doesn't have a light. I have the old style like this. Uh, yeah, this is the more common style uh, setup that you have on a lot of the older tractors. These, the newer ones like the 1772 had the light. Uh, you can still put a light on this. We're going to talk about that here in a little bit. But you have to disconnect this um, if you do this glow plug upgrade on these older tractors. You don't want this on here. So um, you'll disconnect the wires that go to this. And then I'll show you how you can still use this existing uh, bracketry right here and put a light in it so that you can hook it up the same way as I'm going to do with this and have a light on here to let you know the glow plugs are uh, firing. So let me get the parts list out. I'm going to show you what you need. Uh, we'll go over some prices of what this is going to cost and then I'll start grabbing some tools and show you guys how the process is done. All right uh, for uh a list of parts you're going to need for this and i'll put everything in the description below with with part numbers uh, mostly i got everything from napa and napa usually has everything in stock and i just like supporting napa there's still one of the older parts stores left that uh, have pretty knowledgeable staff too so you're going to need some six gauge battery cable and you need approximately two foot of this you can get a little more if you need to i'll throw some prices on there this stuff here once i tell you what you need um, you're going to need three glow plugs. Uh, check your tractor. Uh, your tractor might have had upgraded glow plugs through the years. Uh, the ones you need is a Y103V. And the reason is the older glow plugs cannot take the 12 volts. So these newer glow plugs have a resistor in them or something, and it can take the higher voltage. So you have to have this, this glow plug in there. But like I said, go ahead and check on that uh, before you purchase them because you might have them. Uh, some 18 gauge wire, that's what I'm going to use to run to the indicator light. You can use 16 if you have it, even 14 if you want, but honestly 18 gauge is going to work really well and there's no sense to spend a lot of money on wire, you know, heavier gauge when you don't need it. You're going to need some 10 gauge wire. Um, you could have went 8 going from the relay to the plugs, that's what was recommended, but the problem I was having with that is it's hard to find in lugs that will fit eight gauge wire with a hole diameter that small. So this is only gonna run like five inches from the, from the solenoid to the glow plug. So I don't think 10 gauge wire is gonna get hot enough. It's gonna hurt anything, but you need at least half a foot um, of 10 gauge wire while you do this. And then you'll need some connectors, 10 gauge with the eyelet to hook to the glow plug. 
uh, three inch, uh, three eighths inch shrink tubing. Really recommend that. You're gonna need some five sixteenths lugs. You'll need two of these, but it comes in a pack of five. But if you can buy them singly, if you can find them, that's fine. Uh, there's two ways you can do this. I always run wire loom on everything when I do it. And the reason is this cable is gonna be hooked to the battery. Um, it's gonna be hot at all times, you know, going to that solenoid. So even though this has some pretty thick coating on it, uh, diesels vibrate a lot and everything. So I'm going with wire loom, uh, 3 8 inch diameter to go over that. Works real well. Um, it's pretty inexpensive, you can pick that up. Now when I drill through that firewall, you can either use, I'm gonna use a grommet because there again, I don't want this hot cable, you know, rubbing through some sharp metal and chance arcing in a fire. Um, if you don't use the wire loom, you can get by with 10 millimeter grommet. If you are using wire loom, uh, which I am, you'll need a 14 millimeter, and that's inside diameter uh, grommet. Uh, the solenoid that I'm gonna be using is an ST404SB, and uh, these were fairly inexpensive. Get that out of the box. That's what I'm gonna be using for this. So, uh, to price everything out, to show you guys a little bit of, of what you're looking at, uh, six gauge battery cable, it's like $2.50 a foot, so two foot, it's gonna be $5. Uh, the 10 gauge wire is $1.29 a foot is what I paid for it, so half a foot's gonna be 65 cents. The glow plugs were $7.49 each, so that's a total of $22.47 for them. Uh, the cable lugs were I think $6.40 for them. Shrink tube is $3.60. This solenoid here is $24.99. And the wire loom, I got that I think at Rule King. I usually buy that by like 50 foot boxes, but I'm so unorganized. I don't, I don't think I might've used it all in the golf cart when I did it. But anyway, you can buy it uh, six feet. It's like five bucks, so about a buck a foot. Uh, so grand total. Um, with the wire loom, it's $68.11, and then you figure a little bit extra money for loom, and then you're gonna need connectors for when you want run the wire to the dash. So for right around $70 is what it's gonna cost you um, from an estimate to do this upgrade kit. So if that's not something you're willing to wanna spend um, for an upgrade kit for glow plugs, then you know I understand it is quite a bit just to upgrade it, but We'll see if this makes a huge difference in starting the tractor, it's probably worth it. So, wanted to share that information. Um, let's go ahead and get started putting this on. All right, now if we do, before we do get started, if you have the old style heating element for the glow plugs, uh, when you turn the glow plugs on, this is sort of a resistor. It helps uh, not burn the glow plugs up from what I read is also, but this gets hot and it glows and then you know you try to start the tractor. Uh, you want to get rid of this, like I said, you want to unhook this. What you can do is this part here goes through your dash and then this screws on to hold it. So that all can stay there. Um, just loosen these bolts up. Take this wire out completely. Uh, get rid of that. You can use this existing hole and I've seen people do this before. Now you can either buy little plastic inserts for LED holders, buy your LEDs, solder them, whatnot. Uh, when I did my golf cart, I bought a lot of holders and made custom lights. Here's one I'd gotten from Radio Shack a while ago, but you can, you can get online and order this stuff. Uh, just measure what millimeter hole it is you need. And these little LEDs come with these plastic holders. So these have little tabs on them. And all you get to do, slide that LED right into that hole, lock it in place, and then just wire it up with the wires. So. If you got the old style, that's an easy way to do it. And then you don't have to worry about filling in that giant hole. You'll just have the little, little LED dot in the center let you know your glow plugs are going. All right, before we get started, the first thing I wanna do is disconnect uh, the battery. So I'm gonna disconnect the negative battery cable. And the reason for this is, while well, we make this cable for this positive cable with the lug to hook it up and feed it through here, uh, you want to make sure that that's going to be hot you don't arc nothing so uh, first and foremost most undo the negative cable and we'll start making the, the cable to go to the solenoid all right so after you disconnect the negative battery cable next thing would be is to remove the old glow plugs put the new ones in um, that's what a glow plug looks like 
So the original Kubota ones have this uh, funny nut on here. You have to loosen it on the top there with a flathead screwdriver and pull these off. I will be changing these when you buy new glow plugs. They come with the different head on them and I'm going to be using these. They're just easier to torque these down and put on once you get the wires on. So I will be using the newer ones of them. Uh, this already has the proper glow plugs in it. So therefore I'm not going to exchange, change these out. But uh, before you do this, you take these out of here. You want to take the air compressor and blow all the dirt out around them little areas down there around the glow plugs. So when you pull these out, uh, that gunk don't go down in your engine. So remove the nuts, the wires, pull the glow plugs out, put the new glow plugs on, and then we'll make the, the battery cable next. All right, uh, first step, we'll take our cable. I'm gonna leave the length on this because I bought more because I'm gonna do two of these. I'm gonna do one to the 982 project as well. Uh, you're gonna need one of your 516 lugs and you'll need some shrink tubing and you just want to cut a piece of the shrink tubing and once we we do that we'll slide it on first with this one being the first one you, you forget you can always slide it over afterwards and then you'll need your one lug so what i'm going to do is strip the wire back now on this six gauge cable it's my wire strippers here unless you have some really large ones isn't going to get around that so usually what i do very carefully is just take a utility knife like this and just score around there around it good watch your fingers that's really sharp to slide off of there it doesn't take much and then you can usually just twist that like that and there you go hopefully that caught on camera but um and then i'll just cut that off with wire cutters to what I need. We'll put that in the lug and we'll crimp this down. So what I'm using for a lug crimper, I purchased this at Napa and I bought this over a year ago and I used it for making cables for the, the 582 project. And I will say, I think it was like 40 bucks or something. They make other styles of crimpers for these lugs, but this is a nice handy tool to have. I'm glad I bought it. And the reason is, is I've used this already on a couple other tractors making new cables for it. I'm gonna keep making new cables for my tractors. So it's a handy tool to have. What you'll do is you lift this up. It's got a keeper here. You lock it in place. You put your wire in here. I'll put it on the floor and show you. You can sit it on a workbench or the floor. You stick your lug in there like that that'll slam down into place to hold it and then you just take a hammer and whack it and now this isn't like trying to make the ball go up and hit the the bell i mean it's not whack-a-mole it's you don't have to wham on this thing as hard as you can just a good solid smack and it'll crimp that cable so let me go ahead and show you how it works all right lock my crimper into place Put my piece of shrink tube on there already put that in there put that in that'll lock in place that's all it takes and you have to say that that's not going anywhere because if you don't say that you know that's going to come off all right Got me a good crimp on there. I'm gonna slide that shrink tube up there. And get it about right there on that lug. Uh, you can do this by using a lighter and going around it. That works. Uh, what I like to use, there's different methods. A heat gun works good, and you don't even have to use it on high heat. Just a low, medium heat works out pretty good for this. If you wanna get it done quicker, you turn it on high. There you go. That's one nice looking cable ready to be attached to the battery. And I, like I said, I like using shrink tubing. It just makes it look cleaner and you don't have to worry about wires coming out touching anything. So we'll get this hooked up, start drilling some holes and 
running some wire. All right, I just hooked the cable up temporarily and hooked the positive cable as well. And I just ran the wire down to here. That's where I'm gonna drill my hole to put my grommet and then the wire will feed here. So let me remove this and we'll drill the hole. All right, getting ready to, took the plate off and getting ready to drill the hole to put this grommet in there. Uh, easiest way is if you have a caliper, that's what this tool is, this is a digital one. Uh, you can test what size of hole you need to drill in there. And this was right around a 21, 22 millimeter is what I need, roughly 21 millimeter hole. Now, one inch is too big, three quarter inch uh, is just under the size. So even when I put that on there, a three quarter inch hole saw is roughly 18, uh, 19 millimeters. So that's all I have. I don't have anything in between that, but I just wanted to point out that's a good way to judge because the, there's a little, this is a lip that goes around these. So when you drill that out, it's always good to find out what size hole you need. So I'm gonna drill the hole and I'll probably have to just grind that out a little bit and we'll put it back on and run the wire through. All right, that three quarter inch hole worked out perfect. Um, that went right in there. By the time it spun around and ground, I just took a file and filed off the burrs on each side so it didn't gouge in there. But um, there we go. Here's that loom. Loom fits through there perfectly. So that's a good fit. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Let me go reattach this and then we'll start running more wire through. All right, I ground around. I took one bolt at a time and that's because this holds this whole fan, fan bracket on here and I don't want that to fall off. So I loosened one bolt, I ground around there and got it real good and clean. And then I'll put the solenoid on there, tighten it down sort of snug enough to where I can slide this one over, take the bolt out and put it in. Uh, I did take a file and I had to file them holes out a little bit. Now the bolts fit through there nicely. And when I put this on, that area there that I ground down is bare metal. I like using this uh, true copper plate it's a conductive anti-seize compound and this has like ground up copper flakes in this i've been using this stuff for years on electrical stuff and it works really well helps keep it from rusting and helps you know conduct electricity at the same time and also since this is the fan bracket i am going to put a little bit you can use blue loctite this is the orange this just holds a little stronger but you can still loosen it like the blue but uh, I do suggest using a little bit of Loctite when you put this back on here because of this being a diesel vibrating, you don't want that shaking and vibrating off. All right, I got the wire ran. I put the loom on it. I don't have everything zipped in place where it's going to go yet. I just hooked it up to the relay. There's the wire that ran from the glow plug right there, the orange wire. I put some loom around that also uh, to help protect it. I put that in and when I go ahead and turn the key, you can hear it click. So it's getting power to the relay, um, that works. I did use a test light, I test it, it's getting power. So now I'm just going to hook the wire from there to the glow plugs and then I'll run a wire up here to the dash, but I'm going to have to remove the battery to do that and then we'll test this out. Okay, got the solenoid all hooked up. All the wires hooked up i just have to remove the battery to run the wire uh, back to the gauge now when i put these on originally i was trying to use some of these boots like 90 degree boots off of like coils or or bolts i wanted something to help protect that uh, i didn't have much luck but fortunately i had some of these around from some old batteries and these fit on here perfectly so i'm just going to go ahead and use them to help protect. I'll put a couple little zip ties around there to hold them on. And with that wire being hot all the time, I wanted some kind of rubber uh, boot protection on there. Just if something hit it, you know, it wouldn't rub. So just another idea there to show you guys um, little things I'm doing here. All right, so I took the battery out. I looked back here at this light and I got to thinking when I was getting ready to take it out, um, there's really no need to on these ones. So it won't stay on constant, but the glow plug light will still turn on. Uh, I didn't have the small connectors that I needed, and I didn't want to cut the wiring harness on this light. So I was going to just remove the wires and put some connectors on there, but I looked in my kit, and 
of course I don't have any. So on the 982 diesel, the project I'm doing, it has the old indicator. I'm gonna go ahead and put a light in for that one. So when I do that one, I'll show you. But as of now, I still have to just finish this up and we'll, we'll test fire it to see. But when I hit the glow plugs, the light comes on on the dash already. So um, if you already have the light, the only difference would be is the light goes out in about six seconds where if I would have wired it direct into there, it would have stayed on constant when I had power going to glow plug. So I don't know, as long as that relay's clicking, I think I'll be all right for this one. Uh, if it did start hard, I could always test them, but that's why I didn't do that, and just so you know. So I'm gonna move some tools here, put some side panels back on, and I know it's not a true test because this is a little different than you know when I started earlier, but we'll just see. I'm gonna hit the glow plugs for about 10 seconds, and we'll see how this thing fires up. And then I'm gonna go park it for the night, put the battery tender on it, and then tomorrow we'll go back about 50 degrees and, and see the upgrade. All right, like I said, I know this isn't a normal test. I'm gonna take it back, we'll do the other test tomorrow, but I'm gonna hit the glow plugs for just 10 seconds on this, and never have I hit them for that little time. Usually, even in the summertime, it's 40 seconds I have to hit them, and this thing still don't wanna start. So, it's about 11 o'clock, so starting this up, I'm probably gonna aggravate the wife. I don't even know if this video is even gonna get published, but we'll go ahead and find out. Never has this tractor ever started with 10 seconds on the glow plugs. I know it's warmer in here, but even in the summertime, it could be 80 degrees out. I'd have to hit these glow plugs for 30, 40 seconds. It didn't want to crank. It would just puff smoke. So, so far, I think this upgrade is a really good idea. Uh, time will tell. I'm going to take this back. We're going to leave it tomorrow night. I'll take the camera out there. We'll give it 18 hours, 50 degrees, and we'll see how it performs from when we did the initial start before I put the upgrade on. All right, got everything buttoned up. Uh, everything's zip tied up here. That shouldn't hurt nothing. I think it all turned out pretty clean right through my grommet back to here. I was gonna wait till later tonight to do this test, but um, battery tender says the battery's fully charged like it was yesterday. I know it looks sunny in here, like it looks beautiful, but it's actually not. Ambient temperature in the garage the thermometer now says it's 46 degrees and yesterday was warmer, it was 50. So. Uh, I think this will be a good test. I'm not going to have to wait any longer. Uh, on the decal under the hood, now this was original. It says between 50 and 32 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, approximately 20 seconds. I'm going to do 15 seconds on the glow plugs. That's only because it's 40 some degrees, and I don't think that's too far off. It shouldn't be more than that. So let me set the camera up. We'll do a 15 second glow plug and see how this upgrade works. I think I got my starter figured out. There might have been a loose connection. If not, I'm prepared today to give it a little tap uh, with the hammer. But let's go ahead and see if this thing's going to start. say that glow plug upgrades a success guys um, never has it ever started that good being this cold I think five more seconds going to the 20 seconds probably would have been enough to fire it quicker but minimum of 15 that gave me a good indication that uh, this upgrades worth it so gear reduction starter upgrade on the glow plug that's what it looks like. I'm going to be doing a separate video on this of my stock 782D with the original starter and no upgrade kit. And then we'll do a test on this just to see how much better it works side by side. Hope you guys like this video. I'm sorry for making it as long as I did. I sometimes get a little too in detail and make the videos longer than I'd like to. But 
I don't like to leave anything out, so anyone doing this project, I can cover pretty much anything. That way there's no questions with you when you go to do it. So if you like these kind of videos, anything else you'd like to see, please comment below. I plan on doing some more different videos on the starter upgrade as well. As always, thanks for watching.